And then here came Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits, and guess what they were going to do to us, Solomon Grundy? They were going to talk to us. Let me talk to you. But now here is, is, is where the, the, the segment, the talking died. Because I'm going to describe what I saw, Brian. Tell me if you disagree or if for some reason you think maybe there was a, a some kind of chloroform leak from the hospital next door that put the fans to sleep. <laughs> it was piped through the air ducts and put everybody in a state of suspended animation. Maybe the cordyceps. To, but anyway, Lashley and the Street Profits come out and talking about being attacked by the AOP and uh, Killer Croc, Carrion Cross and Paul Ellering and Scarlet and last week. And I love Bobby Lashley, but I've said his promos are not his strong suit. He needs more conviction in his voice. He really is. I mean, he's the most badass <laughs> the MMA fighter on the fucking planet. And what a beast of an athlete, but he really is a nice guy and a soft-spoken guy. But it, he says the right stuff. We're not cowards. We confront people face to face and fight, but it needs to have more oomph in this day and age. And he's the one that's got to carry the the legitimacy for the other two because when they've had promos to pass, all they've done is just, I don't know, comedy at each other, whatever the fuck they were doing. But now they're they're calling the heels out that beat them up last week and nobody's reacting. And then the... The lights dim, and there's Paul Ellering in the entrance, and it looks like somebody went to film school is figuring this out. He's in darkness, but he you can see him, but he turns and grandiosely points. Is that a word with grandiosity? Yes, it points is. Points to the screen, and on the screen, there's Carrie and Cross and Scarlet doing their spooky stuff where they recite some shit. And they're putting Occam and Razor over. And now their group is called the Final Testament. And the video ends, and the fans are sitting and staring, and Lashley and the Street Prophets are standing in the ring with their proverbial dicks in their hands. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is not an example of WWE at their best. I mean, they're good at making people care about things, as we've said. They're better than AEW at that, but they have not gotten the people to care about this. And I don't know how, why, or, well, I mean, I do know why to a certain degree, but it's not, it's just not working. They had MVP with Lashley. We know why, because MVP is a great talker. He's not with them anymore. And this whole, they're just not buying into, I just don't feel, you could feel watching that segment, like you said, there was no energy, like people just were waiting for it to end, to get on to the next thing. I think one thing they could do is, is try to educate fans even on who Paul Ellering is, because I think it's awesome to see Paul Ellering on my TV in 2024, but I'm almost 50 years old, you know, and I watched the Road Warriors in their prime, and I think it might help if they explained who he was, I know that the uh, the tag team, those, those guys, they, they wanted Ellering with them as part of their presentation. It was a condition, apparently, on their return to the company. They had asked for that. But I, I think they should explain why. Like, OK, these guys are ma managed by now, the who guy. Asked, did the company ask these guys or these guys told the company they wanted Ellering? I had heard Which... that. The, the tag team, and God, I can't remember, the, was Authors of Pain, is that the name? Okay, there's so many. AOP, -A but yes, Authors right. of Pain. but it, It's uh, these tag teams now, it's everything is something of something. But the Well, you know, you got who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third, but go ahead. Right, I'm not asking you who's on second. <laughs> exactly. But no, the, they had asked, I heard, the Authors of Pain, the AOP, to have Ellering with them. And that's why he's there. I could be wrong about that. I think that's great. But you want to educate people. Hey, guys, this is the yeah. guy who managed the Road Warriors. You know, that give them a reason to care. Well, and uh, uh, Brian Last and I talked about this also uh, on one of the shows last week. But uh, Paul, primarily after the initial run, Paul was a, gr a great wrestling prospect uh, for. 
I guess probably about four or five years, precious Paul Ellering. He had uh, he main evented in Tennessee as a heel. He main evented in Mid South and in Georgia, and then had a couple of really bad knee injuries in a in a row. And I mean, his physique when he first came to Tennessee in '79, he was a bodybuilder. He looked big for hawk and animal. I mean, he wasn't like three hundred and something pounds and as tall, but he was huge as far as his physique. And he had to drop a lot of weight. And because by then, Precious Paul had a, had adopted a really good heel promo, they said, well, Paul can talk. Let's make him a manager. He, he's hurt. And and that's where he ended up with Hawk and Animal. And they had a not only a professional relationship, but he was their shoot manager, not only in terms of, you know, uh, their bookings and et cetera, keeping track of their transportation, but also he invested their money. And that was that when he carried the Wall Street Journal around in the promos, that was the fucking rib. That's what he was reading in the locker room. So, Oh, wow. Uh, but point being, after they were together for the first, what was it, two years, the Road Warriors had to become baby faces because they were so popular. Then Paul was limited as a manager in cutting promos because he had to be a baby face right and because the hawk and animal were so their personalities were so over the top he took the back seat as he should have because you know you had on a hat type of thing he can't be outrageous too he's just kind of the the insidious one behind the scenes right so pointed that was a unique dynamic and it didn't allow paul to cut then the following decade of great memorable promos and for to be in all these highlight videos or whatever. So yes, to, your point is well taken. People don't remember great Paul Ellering promos. People don't remember Paul as the leader of numerous, you know, main event stars because he's, he was identified with the Warriors and he was in that unique position. They were the hottest tag team at the box office in the business. You don't want to change anything. But to establish him as a heel manager of anybody else, much less these two guys that I didn't see two tons of fun in, you have to do interviews, history packages, not only telling people who he was, but telling people what he wants to do now. Why is this near 70-year-old man right. out here with these guys? Does he have something that they're going to get for him or why is he beholden to them that he would do them this favor? Right. No, none of it, none of it makes sense. And even like, if you, the only way you'd even know that they were affiliated at all in the past was if you were watching NXT, because when they called them up to the main roster, the last time a few years ago, before they released them, Ellering didn't come with them. So he he was only with them in NXT. So so it's a pretty obscure thing. I, I just get the feeling when he comes out there, like you said, that there's this no. I mean, I don't want this to sound like an insult. I mean, he's he's a small old man. That's what he is. But you see this little old man standing in front of a black background yeah. and you're thinking, who the hell is this guy? You know, that's what I'm sure that's what young fans are thinking. And again, 44 years ago, when I first met Paul Ellering, he had a better physique than I would say all but maybe two or three people in the entire WWE today. Mm -hmm. But times change. So what is the presentation now and what is he going to? But it's point is I was going to make is that's what they could do with Paul. But besides that, the cause is lost to begin with because Karrion Cross and Scarlett, the, this is the WWE's black holes of charisma. It takes two to tango where they're trying to set people up to make stars. Right. But you have to also not only have the material, but pick the right people. And the ship has sailed on carrying cross. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody's going to Scarlett's beautiful. She needs to be with somebody else doing something else. And Paul with the other two guys, I don't, I don't see anything about the, the other two guys that, I mean, they they look like a smaller version of the Vikings, a fat tag team that can do shit. Well, they're already not using the Vikings. So anyway, 
that's uh, I, I don't think the I think the final testament, the last chapter has probably almost been written. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yes. In the book of Corny. Is that, if, if, folks, let me know if that needs to be a T-shirt. The book of Corny. 